On this edition of the High Tech Nomad, we'll be taking a look at two-factor authentication, also known as 2FA. Hey, Kuyo, you really gonna make crawfish at Tufe for true? Ha <laughs> ha, it gonna be good, I guarantee. Les élèves bon ton roulé. What? Uh, no, we're not talking about et tu fait. We're talking about 2FA. Roll the graphics. Well, in all fairness, uh, there is a lot of confusion around 2FA or two-factor authentication. Basically, it's like when you go to write a check and they ask for a second form of ID. In previous episodes, I've already covered the fact that just using a password to protect an account now is pretty much useless. More and more websites are now giving you the option to enable two-factor authentication to protect your account. So if it's so good, why don't most people use 2FA or two-factor authentication? Uh, the short answer is they're lazy. I want to focus on using an authenticator app as our second factor of identification. But first, let's take a look at the other ways or the other types of two-factor authentication that are available. First, there's social engineering questions. You put in your password, they ask you questions like, what street did you grow up on, or what was the name of your first pet? You enter in the answer, and they grant you access. Obviously, the big issue there is that to get the street that you grew up on, or your wife's first name, is not as difficult as you might think. So, this type of option is not really that good. I'm surprised that a lot of banks still use this as the only second factor of authentication. Another 2FA method is the phone call. You enter in a password, you get a phone call, they read you a code, you type that code in and you're all set. Next, we have text or SMS, pretty much like the phone. You put in your password, you're texted a code, you enter that code and you're all set. Then of course we have my favorite, which is the security key, which is pretty much the most secure way to do it. You put the key in, you tap it and you're all set. The problem is a lot of websites still don't use security keys. We want to talk about authenticator apps. And basically, an authenticator app basically makes a deal with a website, they agree on some special code, and they then stay in sync for the rest of whatever. Your authenticator app will generate a new code every 30 seconds or so. You then enter this code into the website and you're in. The good news about authenticator apps is that the code that they give you only lasts for 30 seconds. The bad news is, is that the code lasts for 30 seconds. There's been reports of people being sent to phony websites, being asked for their password, and then being asked for their code. If you enter your code into that fake site, for 30 seconds that code will be usable. That's enough time for somebody to log in on the real site with the real code. There are basically three authenticator apps that I want to talk about today. First is the official Google Authenticator app. Now remember, all these apps work the same. Some of them have some additional features, but they all do the same thing. When you get to a website, you point your phone at the website. It takes a picture of a QR code, which basically enters in what we call the seed, and that then creates the synchronization between your app and the website. The Google Authenticator works just fine. It's free, it's available in the Play Store, and almost website refers to the Google Authenticator. But you don't have to use the Google Authenticator. The next one I want to talk about is the one that I use, which is the LastPass Authenticator. The LastPass Authenticator functions the same as the Google Authenticator. However, I find it easier to read and easier to use. We've saved the best for last, which is the Yubico Authenticator. The Yubico Authenticator works just like the Google Authenticator and the LastPass Authenticator, but there's one little difference. The Google Authenticator and the LastPass Authenticator store the seed in your device. And therein lies the problem. If I have to switch phones or I lose my phone, all my codes are gone. 
I would have to start from scratch. I'd have to log in on the website, and if I sort of sealed it up and need this authenticator code, I'm in deep trouble. What I suggest is, is that when you enter a code into a Google Authenticator or LastPass, that you also take a screenshot and save that QR code. But that brings us back to our first issue, which is you're lazy. It sounds good in theory, but you're not going to do it. So how do we use an authenticator without having to worry about what we do when we change phones? Again, YubiKey to the rescue. See, what YubiKey does is it stores the seed directly inside of the key. All I have to do is tap my key to my phone and I instantly get my code. Because the seeds are stored within the key, I can pick up another phone, tap it, and get my codes. Or if I'm at home, I can take the key and plug it into my computer and get the codes. Only disadvantage I've found to using the Yubi key to store your codes is that it only holds 35. Now, for most of you, 35 is gonna be more than enough. For a super geek like me that always turns on two-factor authentication, I need to be able to store about 100 codes. I've gotten around this limitation by storing the 35 most used codes here, and the rest of them I'm using in the LastPass authenticator. I did take the time to take a screenshot and store that away so that if I do lose my phone, I can then go ahead and put them back in. But again, the top 35 are with me all the time. I want to take this time to also talk about my newest channel, which is called Two Minute Tech Talks. During the course of the day, I come across a bunch of things that I think are really helpful and I really want to share with you guys, but I can't pad it out for 10 or 15 minutes. And if I save it, to group them all together to present to you, it might be a month before you get them. So now when I come across something I think is really good, I'm gonna put it into a little two minute video and boom, you've got it and you're all set and ready to go. While you're at it, you can click the subscribe button here as well. I'm hoping to get to 3,500 subscribers fairly soon. Remember, my 100th video is coming out soon. I'm gonna talk about a lot of stuff in the background, but an interesting fun fact, is only 3% of the people that watch these videos actually click the subscribe button. So think about that for a minute. If you were walking down the street and said hello to 100 people and only three people said hello back, how would you feel? Of course, I'm not suggesting that you go down the street saying hello to everybody. Actually, why not? In any event, I'll talk to you soon. Until the next time, this is Orman Beckles, the High Tech Nomad, signing out.